Hello, I'm Fon Quinta, welcoming you to the 6.30 p.m. edition of News on My Media, Prime Television. We're broadcasting live from our headquarters at Fengu, Drumbang, in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. The news starts now, heavy downpour in Douala, Cameroon's economic city, since the early hours of Wednesday, September 1, has inundated several areas, making roads inaccessible and prevented some residents from leaving their homes. The rain disrupted morning the early activities of most Douala city dwellers, as some were compelled to stay at home while others had no other option but to walk through the running waters and in rain to get to their different job sites. Neighborhoods like Sablo, Bona Musadi, Valley, Beseke, Makepe, Misoke, New Bell, amongst others, have been inundated since morning. Now, inhabitants of Bojong, a precinct in Bonaberry, Duala Falls subdivision, Lithua region of Cameroon, are still to come to terms with the road in that community. The stretch of road from Petrolex to Bojong is deplorable with road users forced to mend their way through the muddy roads to get to their various job size details. Right ahead. When rain clouds gather, inhabitants of Bojong, a neighborhood in Bonaberry, the Walla Falls subdivision, Lithora region of Cameroon, are forced to meander their way through muddy roads, pools of water, and potholes. This is the state of roads from Petrolex Ndobo to Bojonga months after the road was graded and potholes were filled with pebbles and stones, yet without remedying the problem as a temporary measure has been washed off. Motorcycles ported, forcing their way through the muddy roads while others occupy the little parts meant for pedestrians. The rapid degradation of the road poses severe challenges as road users are forced to devise other risky strategies. With this acute problem of road degradation, it is hoped officials look into the situation. Now a group of bandits specialized in breaking into homes in Kongsamba have been apprehended by elements of the National Gendarmerie in Kongsamba, Mungo Nord. They were arrested during an operation led by the Gendarm commander, uh, Company Commander Daniel Fitz Details, with Eileen Sama. Following a number of complaints from the population of Konsamba and its environs, Captain Mebuins Daniel Fritz, commander of the Gendarmerie Company Mungo Nord and his men, carried out a two-day operation during which the hoodlums were intercepted and a good consignment of stolen items, including gas bottles, mattresses, TV sets, kitchen utensils, electric appliances, among others. According to Captain Mebuins Daniel, the bandits usually carry out their operations while their victims are away and completely empty their houses. Last week, at the instructions of the SDO for Mungu, we carried out an operation following the numerous complaints we received concerning the theft incident and the mode of action by the bandits, which is to invade people's homes in their absence and completely empty the content of the house. The inhabitants of the neighborhood where the operation was launched expressed gratitude to the security and law enforcement officers. I want to say thanks to the gendarmerie for helping me retrieve all my lost items. I am very happy for their efforts. I just want them to keep it up. Really, for the first time in the Mungu, Konsamba to be precise, we can heave a sigh of relief. The commander and his elements are really doing a great job, trying to reinforce security in the Mungo. I give them big ups for fighting against these armed robbers and petty bandits in the neighborhood. Captain Mebuins Daniel seized the opportunity to thank the population of Kongsamba for their collaborative efforts. We also want to thank the population because it is the population 
that gave us the tips. We want to encourage them not to be afraid of denouncing all suspicious persons in the neighborhood. It's going to help us do our jobs better. It is thanks to the information from the population that we could lay hands on these bandits we have just presented to them. Following the incident, the Gendarmerie commander has called on all whose items have been stolen from their homes recently to stop at the Gendarmerie company Mungo North with respective receipts of the stolen or missing items and collect their belongings. In a related story, police have apprehended a man accused of impersonating high-profile personalities to extort money from citizens. In his list was the director of civil cabinet, special advisor to the president of the Republic as Jain Ganthasas. His name is Georges Aurélien, camouflaged as a builder. Meanwhile, on social media, he assumes the roles of Minister of State, Director of Civil Cabinet, Minister Delegate at the Presidency in Charge of Defense, the Special Advisor at the Presidency, what more, Cameroon Ambassadors. His networks consisted mostly of Facebook and WhatsApp using a well-defined modus operandi. He mostly operated through the creation of fake profiles, which he used to send messages to his victims. When he sends you a message, he acts like either the director of the civil cabinet or the president's special advisor or other personalities. He will now send you a phone number telling you that it is his secretary or private secretary. Several Cameroonians had fallen in George's pit. Among them, the South Regional Pedagogic Inspector, who was deceived by the fake profile of the special advisor at the presidency. I wrote to Rare Amira Fuda, who happens to be my uncle. I was even surprised that he answered. He asked me to link up with a certain Emmanuel Njeri. The man asked him to send him my documents, which I eventually did. Then he said I should give them a beer to him and his supposed secretary. A total of 100,000 francs CFA was sent in two installments by the victim. George's false promises included promotions, salary increase, and audiences with the president. From July 28 to the 25th of August, we noticed that this number had received deposits of over 4,090,000 francs CFA. Arrested on August 20, the suspect resided in the Mbopi neighborhood in Douala. He remained mute to the microphones of the pressmen. He was apprehended thanks to the swift intervention of the police following several denunciations from his victims. Time for him to answer all the accusations in front of the law. Now the reconstruction of the crisis hit northwest and southwest region of Cameroon is amongst top priority projects highlighted to feature in the 2020 state budget. This is contained in a circular signed by President of the Republic, Paul Biamonde, August 30, as student journalist Ten A. Young Tennyson read through the circular and compiled the following. The President of the Republic of Cameroon, His Excellency Paul Bia, has set priorities for the 2022 budget. A circular to orientate the draft of the state budget for 2022 was signed by the President on Monday, the 30th of August 2021. The presidential circular makes preference the definition and implementation of all import substitution policies. The continuous implementation of the response plan to fight against the dreaded coronavirus, which has been plaguing the world since 2019, having a great economic and social repercussion, was highlighted. The circular equally aims to guide the 2022 budget towards finalizing major first-generation projects in the country. It equally highlights the implementation of the presidential plan for the northwest and southwest regions where there are insecurities as a result of separatist activities and in the far north regions where Boko Haram activities are rampant. Accelerating the decentralization process as well as the execution of the universal health coverage and book policy is also prioritized. The circular equally prioritizes the nation's security and the organization of the African Cup of Nations come January 2022. 
the cautious reduction of the stock of the country's domestic debt, not leaving out the application of the structural reforms, whose focus is at achieving emergence from 2035 are all prime concerns outlined in the circular for the drafting of the 2022 state budget in the country. The presidential guideline also arrogates challenges such as the reduction of public expenditure. The guide also mentions the increase in mobilization of internal non-petroleum revenue and maintaining a balance in public finances in 2022. As a result of an increase in global exports, the circular equally foresees a growth rate higher than 3.4% in 2022. In the floor report, our reporter Dolin Gande sought to find out the causes of an increase in the price of onions in most markets in Cameroon. She spoke to some traders and compiled the following. Just a few months back, onions were thrown in the markets as a red carpet retro for an event. But today, households in Cameroon now have to dig deeper into their pockets to buy onions, one of the most commonly consumed vegetables in the country, as prices have risen sharply due to a biting shortage. The cause, this onion vendor says, onions are periodic in supply. You know that onions are periodic. The supply chain isn't fixed and it comes in firing quantities. For instance, right now, it is the period of scarcity. In the past months, prices have been on a steady rise as scarcity hits markets across the country. And now this onion vendor once more reveals what consumers should expect by December. Not because December is a festive month, but most vendors will now preserve some of their onions as reserves to be released during this period for sales. But that's no guarantee for price augmentation. The price of a bar of onion has shot up by nearly 200% as compared to the recently ended peak season. Following recent retailers' price checks, we are told, I now sell three small fruits of onions for 100 francs, and I've added a small giveaway to it. But when it's the peak season, what I've given out for 100 francs goes far lesser than the price now. However, prices differ in different regions too, depending on the availability of onions. But to the vendors, their greatest challenge now is the consumer's conviction deficiency. Well, there are moments where a client comes complaining that I've become expensive. But when I try explaining to them that prices have skyrocketed, and I can't serve them the same way I served them yesterday. Some get fed up, some accept it, and others move on. Nonetheless, government's attention is needed for the following reasons. We don't know if this problem is caused because of the numerous road construction projects the government is into right now. Because with this, it is important for transport tariffs to be deducted so that more stock can be made available to us. Fingers remain crossed with many wishing that the situation gets better before the festive period. Now some 114 students from the Higher Institute of Business Management and Technology, Hibmat Boya, have defended their Bachelor of Technology. The exercise took place yesterday here at State 1 at the institution. Clarissa Kowe attended the event and compiled the following. Under stiff academic conditions, these are the 114 students from the Higher Institute of Business Management and Technology, Himad Boya, defending their professional BTEC degree taking place at Campus B and under the supervision of the rector of the institution, Professor Ibrahim Tala Kashim. These students came from four schools that make up Himad, that is, the School of Business Management and Sciences, transport and logistics, engineering, and the school of education. They each took turns to elaborate on their topics before the jury. Okay, my thesis was on the topic, the effect of mobile money on the performance of micro-enterprises. My case for the being medical. So my defense on the project server virtualization technology for a proposal for a company. Well, it has been a successful one, and I just finished defending 
and from indications, the jury, the jury members, they were all happy with my presentation. This academic exercise which precedes practical trainings that has been given to this student, according to Professor Kashim, has always been a priority for the institution as a basis for academic excellence. They have received their theoretical training here at Hickman, and we have sent them out on internship to get the hands-on practical experience. So the defense here is to see how far they have uh, got in their practical training. He further advises the students on the need to continuously refine their academic work as learning never ends. Well, first, they must correct, uh, effect all the corrections that have been indicated to them. Secondly, they must understand that this is the beginning. They still have to work hard. Created in 2010, this higher professional institution of learning, mentored by the University of Boya and the University of Baminda, has as mission to groom more Cameroonians to a successful business world. As some 60 holiday makers have completed a two-month computer holiday course organized by King Black Welfare Association. The computer class is aimed at improving the ICT skills of these holiday makers as Kuma on the Ray tells us. Some 200 farmers carefully selected from common initiative groups in Limbe 1 subdivision have benefited from farm inputs from the Limbe 1 Council as part of financial assistance to farmers for the public investment budget of the 2021 financial year. The handing over ceremony took place at the Limbe 1 Council Hall and was presided over by the Mayor of Limbe 1 Council, Madame Epo Simboye Florence, alongside the Subdelegate of Agriculture for Limbe 1 Subdivision, Madame Tu Japier Claire. Addressing farmers, the mayor of Limbe 1 reminded farmers to make good use of the gifts to improve on their hills in order to ensure food security in Limbe 1 municipality and the southwest region at large. She thanked the government for allocating such a project to support farmers in Limbe 1 subdivision, a project which was long awaited by farmers in her municipality, she added. As you can see, the hall is packed full. Not only women, but you have men. They should not take those things to go and store something. They should not take those things to go and keep. They should not take those things to go and sell. They should take those things to go and work with. On her part, the subdelegate of agriculture for FACO, Madame To Japier Claire, saluted the effort of her minister and called on farmers to get ready for the agri show, which will be coming up in December, for them to win the best prizes. <laughs> The beneficiaries expressed satisfaction and promised to make good use of the tools and like Oliver Twist, asked for more. I'm the only man in the struggling man group. I'm very, very impressed with what they could not You see, I don't have words, but I say thank you, thank you. I'm very happy. I have words. The happiness is still there. We've got quite a long time. We've been waiting for the government to recognize us and this now. We know that this is just existing because the government made it like this action. The, kind of the farm worth 30 million francs CFA is part of the public investment budget to support farmers in Limbe 1 subdivision for the 2021 financial year. The importance of belonging to a common initiative group cannot be overemphasized as government and other non-governmental organizations prefer to support farmers accredited to common initiative groups than farmers operating on their own. That was part of the distribution of farming equipment to some farmers in Libya, one subdivision, southwest region of Cameroon, and to something else. A health reporter, Bokengo Worthy, looks at poor health care facilities in Africa and the impact it has on human lives, her report. Healthcare facilities, which include hospitals, clinics, specialized care, clinical labs, care centers, amongst others, are aimed to prevent and treat diseases. According to the World Health Organization, HEAD lays the foundation for vibrant and productive communication, 
in communities. However, this statement seems to be parallel to healthcare facilities in Africa as most of them are dilapidated and unequipped. Africa's health challenges have become increasingly complex. With the continent facing a growing number of outbreaks and the dual challenges of communicable diseases and chronic illnesses, we can't continue business as usual. With around 50% of Africans having poor access to quality health care today, there is urgent need to further improve health systems across our continent so that even in the most remote rural areas, communities can have access to health care services. Following the recent outbreak of the Malberg virus and Ebola disease in Guinea and Malawi respectively, and amid the pandemic, the need for adequate health care facilities in the continent is paramount. According to the World Health Organization Regional Director for Africa, health care facilities together with non-communicable diseases as well as environment are aspects that play the health sector of sub-Saharan Africa. The environment has a profound impact on the health of uh, people in Africa as it does all over the world. Uh, it's through the air people breathe, if it's contaminated, through water and sanitation, and through climate change. And it affects in Africa, we estimate almost uh, one in four of, of uh, illness in, in, in the region. It should be borne in mind that healthcare facilities in sub-Saharan Africa remains the worst in the world. And according to data from the World Health Organization, Cameroon is one of the African nations experiencing a crisis in human resources for health with an estimated 1.1 physician and 7.8 nurses and midwives per 10,000 population. And to support the 17th edition of the Walang Richard Ebwa Holiday Tournament has come to an end with Lions of Salam lifting the trophy. Charles Kiwa attended a sports event and compiled the following. <laughs> Richard Ebua Unity Tournament, Ruth, playing at the Womb Centenary Stadium with 10 teams, saw its finals played August 29, 2021, to ensure a free back to school in the Mentum South constituency. The spectacular finals, presided at by Mentum SDO Abdullahi Aliu, crowd pulling, saw Lions of Salam beating Abonga FC by two goals to one to back home the trophy world 1 million FCFA, amongst other prizes. With community spirit and the need for peace, the cup donor, Honorable Walang Richard Ebwa, member of parliament for Mentum South, addressing Root fans to football lovers said the purpose of the tournament is to serve as a unifying factor and to bring peace. While in short children go back to school, he urged his people to all be lovers of peace. To all our youths, you know, the football is a unifying factor. And it is high time for us to come back to the drawing board and ask ourselves, where are we going? Time people give peace a chance for with peace they can attain all the need. It should be noted the unity tournament donated by oriented parliamentarian Honorable Walang Richard Ebwa bringing youths of the constituency and division during summer holidays keep them occupied by engaging in sports football. Award of prizes to jubilation for this year's holiday tournament. Now Union Sport Chief of Douala has been relegated to Division 2 following their defeat over the weekend in Douala. Student journalist on internship Delay Emmanuel compiles the following report. One of Cameroon's most historic clubs, Union of Douala, has been relegated to the second division. A one new loss against defending champions BWD Baminda was an experience the boys of coach Richard Towa least expected, considering their six-time win of Cameroon's Cup Elite One. A match which was played at the Young Sports Center of Baminda sent Union of Douala at the 11th position on the league table or joining Dragon of Yaoundi, which was already at the red zone. 
it is worth mentioning that this will be the first time Union of Douala will be playing the League 2 since the creation of the club. Coach David Pagu of PWD, Bamenda, expresses his satisfaction about the match. The game is good, it is very correct, so the refs are correct. We are scored uh, at the second half, so we are happy, we are happy. We finish that game uh, in the right way. No, you say Union is a, is a big team, is a Mexican team, so they come here to, to have a, a victory. But you see the game, you see the game. They have many opportunities to score, but uh, they, they are not scored, so that's a, that's a, I am not happy with uh, that uh, case of, of, of Union. But they are, they are going to, to, to prepare well to, to be, uh, to, 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 to be uh, a good team. Chemalon, the central defender for Union of Douala, expresses frustration. The game was really difficult. Yeah, we had our chances, but we couldn't concretize it. I don't know if it's due to inexperience or what. I don't know. Well, the opponent had his. He corrected it. That is football. When you have yours, you don't score. When the opponent has, correct your mistake. It should be borne in mind that the club had been facing some financial issues under the president of Frank Happy, with players complaining of unpaid salaries. And the indomitable Lions of Cameroon have had their first training session at the Olympus Stadium ahead of their encounter with Malawi on Friday, September 3, 2021. Student journalist on internship, Ndile Emmanuel, once more. The indomitable Lions of Cameroon will be knocking horns with Malawi on Friday, 3rd of September. It's been two days of training for the indomitable Lions of Cameroon, two days of preparation for the qualifiers of the World Cup 2022, which will be played in Qatar. Even though not yet complete, the 27 players out of the 29 which were summoned by Cameroon's head coach, Antonio Consasio, showed determination and willingness to win. The training session, which was marked with the presence of Eric Maxim Chupomoting, the captain of the Indomitable Lions, also acted as a motivation for some players. While waiting for the other two players, who are yet to come, John Mary, which plays in Japan, and Frank Zambo Angisa, who was presented to his new fans of Napoli at the price of 400,000 euro. Cameroon's indomitable lion, Clinton J, offers a sum of 13.5 million to 11 schools in the southwest region of Cameroon. To note that this comes up a few days after the launch of his foundation, a foundation which is aimed at helping children facing difficulties. The Cameroon striker, who plays for Dinamo Moscow in the Russian Premier League, explains that every child is full of God's given potential. Sometimes what they need from us is that little push to enable them keep dreaming for a bright future. Seeing joy on the faces of others brings me great happiness. Clinton J has been noted for always giving back to the community. It is worth mentioning that the Cameroonian striker did not have a milk and honey childhood. Nzile Emmanuel Sports Runner concludes today's edition of Prime News coordinated by Lasha King. The news was produced by Ewane Nolinga Elama and his friend Kwita Prima comes up at 7 p.m. with Kumlena Rani. Team stay with us. Good night.